The first exercise we're going to do to get you used to working in Clint is we're going to create what we call a title screen. A title screen, or you might want to call it a landing page, is quite common in interactive documentaries. It's the first page you come to um, when you open up the documentary. In this case, the title page we're going to create is a, a page with a still image on. It will have some text and a couple of buttons to give you entry points to your documentary. So let's have a look at creating that title page. I want to import an image into my project to use in this title page. So what I'm going to do, I'm obviously working on a Mac here, uh, and I'm going to go into my finder to find my images that I have for this example project. And I'm going to go into this folder here, and I'm going to find this computer screen image. So basically, I'm going to use this computer screen image. It's a very generic image that I'm going to use for my title screen. This uh, screen is going to work as a launch screen to get into the different areas of my documentary. It's going to help to kind of build a narrative as we go along. We're going to keep coming back to this computer in this example project. Like I say, it's quite a generic image, but it kind of works for what we're looking for. If you want to import uh, a piece of media into Clint, we could go back to Clint and we could go File import media files. But I think Clint's a lot easier when you're dragging and dropping. So I'm going to have my finder open above Clint and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this image and I'm going to drag it into Clint. And when you drag into Clint you have kind of two areas you can drag and drop your media into. We can drag it into the storyboard or the media tab over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop it into the media tab to start off. So I'm going to drag it over here and let go. And what we should be able to see in our media tab is under images, we have now the number one. If I extend the tab open here, we can see comp screen 01. That should give me a little preview. There we go. Name, tags, comments. So I can add some meta information about this image if I want to. Um, so basically what I've done there is I've imported it into my project, but I'm not currently using the media in my project. It's just sitting in my media library for when I need it. That's the first way you can import media into Clint. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that file I've already imported. Uh, let me just click on confirm. And I'm going to go back to my finder and I'm going to show you the second way you can import media. And that is to drag and drop it directly onto your storyboard. So now if I let go, I get a new sequence cr created from uh, the image that I've imported in. So you can see my image there in the sequence. So now in my storyboard, I've got a home sequence, currently black with nothing in it, and I've got my comp screen 01 sequence. Okay, so if we actually want to see what our project looks like at the moment, what we have to do is go File, Run Project. Okay, and what we get basically when we run our project is a blank black screen. But we can see we are in Clint because we've got the footer down the bottom. Again, we'll come back to this footer at a different workshop, different tutorial, um, but this is the basic Clint footer. So this is our Clint project and we can tell at the top here, the reason we're seeing a blank screen is because we're in our home sequence and our home sequence has nothing in it. So let me just close that down and go back to Clint. So again, there's our home sequence. It's got this little home symbol in the bottom right-hand corner to show you that this is the first thing we're going to see when we start our project. What I want to do is I want to flip this and make my comp screen 01 my startup sequence, so the first thing we see when we load our project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a right-click on that, and I'm going to select the option Set as Startup Sequence. So there we can see I've now got the home icon on this sequence. And what I can do is I can actually delete the home sequence so I don't need it anymore. So I can just do a right click and delete, get rid of it. So now when I go file, run sequence, could have gone run project to hit run sequence, we can see my image is now on the screen. It's exactly what we want. With our sequence selected, let's have a look at our sequence settings here on the right hand side. So over here, we've got a little thumbnail. We've got title, duration, tags, description. So I want to give my sequence a better title than comp screen 01. Um, so I'm going to call this title screen. Okay, it's always good to name things uh, in Clint or whatever program you're really working in. So when you're going to navigate around um, the program, you know what sequences, what elements you're working on. When we get into building a Clint project, it can get quite complicated very quickly if you have a lot of sequences. So we can use names, and I'll show you how to color sequences later to make things easier to understand. Next, we're going to change the duration. 
So I'm going to change the duration of this sequence to be five minutes long. So by default, every sequence in Clint is 30 seconds. I want this one to be five minutes. So this is going to be my title screen. The thing you need to think about with interactive documentaries, any kind of online projects like this, is that usually um, a web page doesn't have a, a time limit, doesn't have a duration. So if you leave it on the screen, it will just stay there forever. With your Clint projects, if you have videos that are one minute, two minutes in length, when they end, what happens next? So you need to start thinking about this as a kind of continual flow. Um, so how long do you want this title screen to be on the screen for? If it's going to have any kind of movement or music going along, you'll need to think about that as well. So I'm going to change the duration to five minutes. I could add tags here, again, for SEO, and I could add description, but I'm not going to bother with that for now. Okay, so we've now got our title screen sequence. What we need to do is add some text and some buttons to this. So if I want to do that, what I need to do is double click on the title screen. Okay, so I'm going to open up um, my, my sequence and that's when I come into the sequence editor. So in the sequence editor, what we have now is we have a timeline down the bottom where we can add, delete layers, change the order of layers, um, and on the right hand side, we still have our kind of inspector where we can see the properties of whatever we have selected. Okay, so we need to add some text to this image. So I'm gonna go across to my media library over here. And as well as being able to import media into my media library, there's also some kind of pre-existing elements in here. So I've got buttons and text. So we'll come back to the buttons in a minute, but for now, let's add some text. So I'm going to expand this media library and in here we can see I've got one, two, three, four, five, six different textiles that I can use um, in my project. All of these textiles can be personalized, can be customized, but let's just start. We want a nice big title for our project. So let's start with title one. Drag that onto the screen and we can see we've got this double click to edit kind of text box here. So I'm going to double click in it as it suggests. I'm going to select my text and I'm going to add my title. So again, bin appetit. Okay, let's click. Okay. Okay, so there's my text box. I can decide where I want it to go. I could try and put it dead center of the screen, but I think as we've got that computer screen in the background, it makes sense to have it in this kind of blank space in the top left hand corner. Okay, so at the moment I've just gone for white text with the default font it shows. To make this text box a bit smaller. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to change that font and pick a different color just to make it stand out a bit more. So I'm going to go for bold font. I'm going to choose. So you've got a selection of fonts in here. You can add extra fonts, and again, we'll go through that in a separate workshop. But for now, I'm just going to select this Arvo font. I'm going to change the size. Let's say, let's go for 54. And I'm going to choose a text color. So I want it to have quite a punchy color. This is a color I'm going to use throughout my project. So I'm going to pick a color that's going to work with kind of the blacks and grays I'm also going to use in my project. So I'm going to go for this bright punchy yellow and I'm going to click OK. OK, and there we have our documentary title. If you see this scroll bar appear um, within Clint, you actually want to think about whether you want to have this scroll bar. This scroll bar will actually show up in the browser when you preview. So if you can see a scroll bar and you don't want it, you have to expand your text box until it disappears. Okay, so there we go. There's our title. So I now want to add kind of like a tagline underneath that. So I'm going to add another piece of text. Let's go for title three this time. Okay, same process. I'm going to change this. And I'm going to put uh, an interactive documentary by Rob Monday and click OK. OK, so this is kind of my tagline. I'm going to position it underneath. Currently too big, so I want to go in there and sort the size out. Again, when you select it, it doesn't actually tell you what size you're currently working at. So you kind of, it's a bit of trial and error. I'm going to go for 18. Might be too small. And I'm going to choose a different font. I'm going to go for open stand semi bold. Let's try that and click OK. OK, that actually looks pretty good. 
So let's once again shrink that text box down and not positioned badly, could move up a little bit. Let's try that. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, if I have a look now down in my timeline down the bottom, I can see my layers. Text one, bin appetite. Text two, an interactive documentary by Rob Monday. And I can also see my comp screen, 01. So my background image here. What you should be able to see in the timeline at the moment is my two text elements last a lot longer than my image does. So if I uh, scroll out a little bit, you should be able to see we have a five minute sequence and we have our, both our text elements last five minutes, but our image only lasts 30 seconds. We can see in the duration here. So what I want to do is I'm going to change that duration. So this also lasts for five minutes. We want everything to be on screen for the entirety of the sequence, basically. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my Clint menu at the top. I'm going to click File, Save, and I'm going to go File, Run Project. Again, I could have done Run Sequence, but I went for Run Project. Run Sequence will obviously run the sequence you're currently working in. Run Project will run the project from the start. 